Go ahead, Jessica. Um, I think a lot of a lot of your question really did sort of come out as we worked through some of the um, the first pass of the OKRs. Um, also, Terry mentions a really good um, uh, the deep dive, the documentation deep dive um, that I think surfaced a lot of very core things that then you know got reflected in this first draft of OKRs. So I think I think we're we're in a, a relatively um, contiguous space in terms of what we're what we're trying to achieve over the next quarter. Um, one thing I know that my, my plan is actually to, and I wanted to, to double check this with everybody, is um, repurpose the readme of the main docs repo, um, since that, that does seem, you know, that's an existing place that seems totally appropriate. Just to explain a little bit of the, um, the, the reason behind this task force, when our meetings are, so on and so forth, um, and use that really as sort of our landing page, which would aggregate some of that, some of that as well. And so that's on my list of stuff to, to do over the next couple of days. Cool. Cool. Something that, that did come to mind for me, especially when I was, um, was reading a comment Michelle made kind of on the Q3 team organization doc where we'd been drafting OKRs and stuff like that, was to go back to kind of the core, the core reason that this is so important to us and to the project um, this quarter and why we we think it deserves to have a task force around it, which is really the, the understandability, the, the ability for people to come to the IPFS project or be effectively using the IPFS project and, and have a good experience doing so. And that really starts from our reliability and our, our trust in setting good expectations for what they can and can't do with the protocol in its current state, what works, what's a work in progress, um, what's still still a dream of the future and that we're we're aligning those expectations and and holding up our side of being a good partner in let it, helping them achieve their goals with with the protocol um, and so to me documentation is kind of a really core part of that if we are doing a bad job communicating that then then we're really um, failing that group of users but it uh, the goal the goal is not the documentation itself the goal is not hey, our docs should be X, it's people have a great experience who are trying to use IPFS today, getting the information they need to do so effectively. And so it, it can, I, I think prioritization is great, saying, hey, we're gonna focus initially on this chunk, and even just like this subset of documentation, because based on our information we have, based on all of the feedback people gave us from IPFS camp, we think this is the most painful section. Um, but I do think that, uh, where I see this group evolving over time includes things like, um, you know, we want a CLI that gives really good feedback as people are trying to use it and points them to parts of the documentation they might need in order to effectively make use of it. Or um, uh, I had another example in my head. Um, it's not coming to me right now. Or, or like our website, I guess maybe, which is, you know, TBD, whether you consider that documentation or not, but like it's a it's a place where we tell people how they can make yeah. use of IPFS, and if it's not accurate, then we're doing them a disservice. And so I just want to make yeah. sure that like we're we're aligned and like that's the goal. The goal is to help people use IPFS really effectively, and that we need to kind of measure ourselves on on that capability. Um, I personally do see the website as part of the effort, and you'll see at least one of our items on the OKRs is to kind of bring like sort of bring use cases into the spotlight on the website and use them as a metric collection tool. And one of the things that I'd really like to see, I know I mentioned this at Team Week, is that we're not just addressing how, that we're also addressing why. And obviously, it's, it's more narrative and it's more stories. And I, I know it doesn't fit as directly for some people. And maybe it's more useful for beginners than people who really feel like they already know why they're here. But I think DWeb in general, is not well understood and the more we can do to get people from normal web to d web to y ipfs is really helpful um, but obviously that's not the immediate first thing that you'll see jessica did you want to pull up our draft or would you like me to um yeah let's see let me grab these two um so here are the two 
So basically what we did, just as a recap, this is the starting document that um, the IPFS Q3 team organization, which was the ending document that we worked with um, in Barcelona. So earlier today, we iterated on that a little bit and um, you can see the second link that I just sent over is the OKR, OKR spreadsheet. Um, so as I understand it, the aim of this meeting is to solidify these OKRs. So let's go through these point by point. Let me know when everybody's on the same page. I can share a screen or it just depends on when folks would be the most. What's, what would folks prefer? Yeah, I think sharing is helpful, it, whether you want to do that or if you want me to do it, if you're taking notes or whatever. Either side. Um, actually, yeah, if you don't mind doing that, that would be great. Sure, let me skip to see if I can. So here's... Oop. Okay, so this is like us trying to get this into the format of this shared spreadsheet. All right, so um, moving on from, from these, um, so the first item on this, so, so these consolidate into three categories. The first is really an evaluation of both the existing content materials as well as the presentation structure that we're using to present IPFS as a whole right now, as well as to make decisions for how we need to change and improve. Um, being that this is, for the most, I mean, obviously there's a tactical component, but being in mind that this is really a, a strategic exercise that, that we want to last this many, many years, um, we chose to focus on making good architectural decisions based on what we've done so far, what we've got, and best steps for moving forward, and to make sure that we do this with a great degree of diligence before we just start making stuff that may need to be ripped out or redone um, in, in the future. So with that in mind, there's three things in this first goal. Uh, the first is to complete a content audit of IPFS.io um, using the existing um, the existing structure for content audit that we put into place that Portia worked on for her work on cluster. You know, we've already put a methodology into place for that um, to good results. So, so using that methodology, um, do a, a, a content audit of IPFS.io, um, realizing that that is not 100% of the entire ecosystem, but that is our you know, the biggest piece to chew. Um, you know, obviously, if we magically end up with more time, we can expand that, but we want to make sure that the basic thing we want to cover in Q3 is, is to do a good thorough content audit of IPFS.io. Um, Portia is the one who is owning that. Um, Portia, did you want to add anything to that? I think you're on mute. <laughs> um, not really. That being said, what I could do, what I need to, if you give me a minute to look for it, I can show you some of the resources that I'm looking at that will inform what this uh, deep dive evaluation will look like for um, the content audit and the actual cluster um, audit too. So you can see what the framework looks like and you can also see like um, what kind of information is informing what this evaluation of IPFS.io will look like. Cool. We may be a little bit short on time to dig into any of the details of each of them, but I think that's something we probably want to do in Thursday's meeting, if that's all right with you. Great, great. Um, Molly. Um, so this would mean in three months, three months from now, we would have kind of like a, the set of screens of the website and kind of the, the value add that they're having and, and what, what use they're bringing. So we'd, we'd actually have like a map of the website and all of the content that lives within it and maybe some amount of information or, or feedback loop on whether or not that content is out of date and needs help. Um, is there any, uh, we'll have I guess like my feedback loop is like from, from like, you know, three months from now, if by the end of September that we, we kind of, we have that high level picture, but we haven't done anything about it. That seems like we're, we're, you know, taking taking a, a slow and long-term approach to something that is um, also a, a short-term problem 
Wow. Well, a lot of things, a lot of things reveal themselves over the course of the audit simply by doing an entire, um, an entire inventory of, um, <laughs> sorry, um, of do stop it. All right. Simply by doing an inventory of, um, of actually getting all that information in one place, a lot of things do self-emerge. Um, we do need to do that audit work in order to determine our next steps. Um, however, that said, you know, as those emerge, it's not just here's all the stuff we have. It's here's how we get to these items. Here's how we get out of these items. Here are where these items are linked from and other places in our ecosystem. Um, so I think you, what, what Porsche is putting together is something that enables you to mobilize on pretty quickly. It's not that we need to go sit on this for, you know, another month and do analysis as a content audit. Um, you know, the thing, the thing becomes useful as it's built. Yeah, I, one thing to add to that, I'd say, is that we got to be careful about, um, it's a combination of wayfinding, so for just understanding where we are at this point in, state, uh, point in time and see if we can direct people to those uh, appropriate bits of information quicker, and that will give us the short-term goal. Long-term is actually understanding the audience and what they want to achieve, and then building some kind of product or platform that will basically facilitate that. Um, that is uh, going to be ongoing, so I think that's like by the end of the three months, we'd like to have that sort of broader vision scope in place and understand on the landscape what people are using currently to do that effectively and and what development effort is required to do that as well for us and whether we want to commit to that much. Um, obviously, it's a, a thing that needs to roll out across all the products. So we'll start with IPFS, but it'll probably, you know, touch um, Cluster and the p and all the other products as well. So it'd be nice to have a uniform way to do that. Um, and that's a bit more complex, uh, especially with Oh, sorry. And, oh, I was just gonna say, especially if we add in like translations and community engagement, all that stuff. So, um, I think yeah, it'd be nice to like by the end of this week, we kind of move some of the furniture in these tasks. But I think uh, overall, these picture, this is the bigger picture stuff that we need to kind of get done. Um, um, but then perhaps like if there's more fires in this one area, then we should focus on that immediately to kind of create some uh, short-term value. Um, yeah, I think my my feedback loop on this is like these seem like the important areas, but they all seem to create artifacts of long-term planning by the end of this quarter um, and spend this quarter on doing kind of evaluation work. And I think that evaluation work is important and we need to do some of it in order to start doing any next steps. Um, my question is more like, can we find ways to front load some scrappy evaluation work such that we can also make tactical improvements that we can measure throughout the quarter instead of starting improvement in Q4, um, which just seems like a, a, long, a long wait in order to start making progress. I, I want to see more of a, a hybrid approach where we're act, actively making some improvements as we go along that we can, we can measure ourselves on. Well, that does tie itself into the third of the primary goals under that spreadsheet. Um, and the third one is to improve to a degree existing content but also to do that with an emphasis on collecting metrics that are going to enable us alongside you know what we're doing in, in sections one and two to be able to make sure that we're focusing our efforts on things that are that are useful that we know that are useful that aren't spinning our wheels um terry has a number of improvements that you know very tactical improvements to proto school that in doing so are going to collect metrics about how people are using the learning resources that they've got which are going to enable us to make good decisions in conjunction with this content audit and in conjunction with hiring somebody to actually be producing the content. You know, all of these things do converge in, able to, in, in order to enable us to move quite quickly. Um, you know, all, all of this adds up together to, to really make us a much more useful force. Um, so that said, you know, that's one of the reasons why we're taking this approach so that um, you know, we're not, one thing that worries me is I don't wanna be creating content or mending content that turns out not to be what we need. And um, we haven't really necessarily been able to do a, a terrifically good evaluation of, of where our content is failing us at this point. So working with a somewhat flawed knowledge to be able to create a whole bunch of new content, especially when we don't have the staffing to create the content itself is, is, is a little bit of a tricky thing, um, you know, but we are trying um, very wholeheartedly to try to make this something that, you know, once, once, as the pieces come into place, we are able to move at a higher speed. Um, so that, that ties into rows four and five, or, or rather five and six on, on this OKR spreadsheet. 
Um, five and six are sort of working in tandem. Um, they are not dependent on each other, but they do work very closely together. Um, one, um, row five is to work as a team as a whole to create a prioritized features list for what we want our documentation platform to be. That's based on our own personal wish list that's based on research and competitors or analogous documentation sites. That also works in conjunction with um, something that's a bit more of, of Chris's task, which is to determine a best possible tech stack or framework for the IPFS doc site, which will then be used to inform future doc site, as you said. Um, you know, that we want to make sure that we're not creating a lot of our own bespoke stuff when already existing things are out there that work just as well, if not better. We want to make sure that it's something that um, is easier for a broader number of people to contribute to and edit, which is one of our major failings right now. Um, so, so those three things together sort of illustrate the strategic component. Uh, you know, yes, that is strategy. Um, we're, we're getting closer to tactical improvements as we go down that list. Yeah, the, the last item, the 12 add content and metrics mechanism to IDFS.io, um, that's focused on like, uh, like kind of why are people coming to the IPFS.io website? What are they hoping to get out of IPFS, right? Um, so, so we're using we're using a straw man question for that um, that enables us both to test some of the things that you just mentioned and then also to get a better grip on the goal goal based persona. Um, so, what we're intending to do is put a question up front and center on IPFS.io that says, "What do you want to do with IPFS?" You know, I I work with large data sets, or I am concerned about data provenance or so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's the very beginning of what would eventually be like a, a very large choose your own adventure book style way of getting into the documentation. Um, starting with your initial goal in mind, functionally what these folks are gonna get is you know, a link to, you know, they're, they're not gonna at this, at this stage in the game get personalized instructions for how to get started with IPFS for large data sets because that's much more towards our end goal. What this does do is enable us to fly test those goal-based personas to see how many people are associated with which personas um, and then also just to see who's clicking on what. You know, that's sort of the beginnings of, of some passive metrics that are going to inform the documentation we create in the future. Yeah, and I think I'd like to see us use this approach more um, often. I think it sounds great um, in that, hey, we have tons of people who are coming to us. We have, you know, 400 monthly contributors on GitHub and IPFS. Um, I'm sure a lot of those people are touching our doc site at some point. And if they could point us to the things that are wrong with it, um, or point us to the things that have not been useful on it, like that, that is a great feedback and focusing loop where instead of, you know, making it the, the core responsibility of the people who are doing the content audit to point to these things, like, let's, make use of the fact that it's an open, open ecosystem that a lot of people are experiencing and um, try and use that feedback loop to both focus our time and also get us baseline metrics on where we are today, which then let us compare and contrast as we make things better. Um, you know, are we, are we solving the problem? And, and Terry, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I know that some of your work on ProtoSchool is devoted toward implementing some of these inline metrics, like the is this useful sort of button type approach. You, you, had, you had a couple of things on, on your list, and um, we're also intending to use evidence of how, how that is received on ProtoSchool to help inform um, uh, row number five and, and the sort of feature set that we would want on, on the main IPFS docs in terms of feedback mechanisms. That's, that's part of that features inventory. Gosh, so doing something like this on the current doc site is included amongst other feedback loops um, within that line item. Yeah, and I mean, and, and it, you know, it may be that based on the decisions that we make as part of these, um, you know, we may need to the cleanest way to do that is incorporated into whatever next gen doc site it is. If the next gen doc site doesn't enable us to get feedback quick enough, we may need to jury rig something in the existing doc site. I mean, that's that's really that's that's sort of in flight stuff that we're going to have to figure out as we go. Um, but you know, really, row five is about here are all of the features that we want in in the the most beautiful, fantastic, perfect doc site in the world. What gets implemented in what order and what's on on the new platform versus the existing platform, you, that, that is gonna have to be open to some tactical discussion as we get further down that path. Oh, I think I just wanna like, give a three minute warning and I have a hard stop. Ditto. I guess the thing I was trying to 
point at, which rereading um, row five, it doesn't seem to quite get at, which is like not just from a features perspective, but from a content, slowly tilt head to side and hold for five to 10 seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, from a content perspective, having kind of a prioritized list through feedback loops with the community, I think that that could get us a lot farther than um, doing this content audit by ourselves. Um, and so I'd, I'd encourage this group to also think about ways to make use of our public community channels or existing sites in order to prioritize and then actually, actually like um, do improvements on those documentations, even if they are like tactical or redirecting things. Um, I think if we can start seeing value, even if it is not, if, even if it's something we're gonna get rid of in six months, um, fixing some glaring open issues in the short term could still be really useful. Um, so like if we, if we can use some feedback loop to find P zeros, then um, also hitting those P zeros so that they don't cause people pain for the next six months, I think would be worth our time. So instead, would you like us to go into like GitHub issues, Reddit and Stack Overflow to get feedback from the community and make changes based on the issues and the um, notes that we see from those different um, platforms? I think that could be uh, doing doing an audit of that and like including that in a content audit of like where are people's current problems with our documentation. Um, I think that would make a lot of sense. Um, you could also use feedback on the doc site itself to understand where people are having problems with it. Um, but I think getting that feedback loop on the content, not just on the features needed of a new content platform um, is something that can is really useful and useful to start tracking from a metrics perspective as well. Right. I think, right. I think Eric's really big on thumbs up, thumbs down things right now. So I'm sure he'd be very happy if we went through everything that exists and added thumbs up and thumbs down buttons to it. But thumbs I don't down. know. And why, and pray tell, oh, why hey, thumb down this? Tell us more. You're off my screen. I didn't know you were here. And oh, this, yeah. um, I'm sorry. I need, I need to leave you guys for my other call, but feel free to uh, put me if you have more questions about the proto school stuff that you'll find linked there. And and I, I have another I have another meeting as well. I think um, I think the things that we're talking about is really at the junction of the content audit and the features wish list. Um, you know, those two things are going to work in conjunction with each other. Um, what that does mean is that we may end up, you know, realistically speaking, need to prioritize things around the features wish list in order to get more detailed information about the things that we suspect as a result of the information audit. You know, we may be looking through the content audit and look at things and find out that you know, we may we may find some glaring oversight in a certain amount of content. We may find that, you know, sort of mid-range onboarding is, is, is a result of the audit starting to feel really bad. And that is going to reveal that we may need to be more aggressive about how we ask people stuff. And that that, you know, isn't necessarily gonna be like, oh well let's just wait until we have a new site done. You know, that's that's going to be yeah. We want to stop and and dig into this a little bit deeper, either through adding some metrics to the existing or questionnaire mechanisms or something to the existing documentation site or some other means. Um, but I think one thing we want to make sure is that we is that we bake some leeway into this quarter in order to act on those things as they reveal themselves. Yeah, even just having a line item for like we we identify and resolve like three P zero documentation issues or something like that would make me feel more confident that we're um, prioritizing a set of our time to be resolving open, painful issues for our users. Um, and my worry is that we'll, we'll, in an attempt to do a really holistic long-term process, we'll not deliver any value for a long time to our users. And so we'll kind of continue and perpetuate this experience that, hey, our documentation site sucks um, because we haven't actually improved it. We've been analyzing it and and I'd like to see us like just just for like the most P0 of those things um, like actually go in and make hot fixes um, or at the very least just be like this is outdated or something. So as we're doing this content analysis so that um, people can start relying on our documentation more um, or at least understand what they can't rely on um, in the short term in addition to having the long term be more accurate. All right. So we'll need to add we'll need to add some additional um, additional OKRs in the section three to reflect that. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, we are running over time. Um, what else? Um, what else do we owe you, Molly, in the immediacy in order to keep things moving forward? Um, I know you, you guys are the most ahead in terms of actually getting your thing in the spreadsheet. Um, so if we can try and aim to finalize the list in the spreadsheet by end of week, that would be awesome. Um, and you guys seem well on track. Just uh, I know that you guys have another meeting on Thursday to continue iterating on it. Yeah. Um, you and I need to have a separate discussion about getting this hiring thing sorted out. Um, I'm away all next week and I want to make sure that we are, you know, that, yeah, we, we can't lose two weeks on this or, or we'll be in a really, really bad way. Um, all right. Um, and then Do you have time on my calendar. We can find time to talk through it later this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon. Um, your, your calendar is more chaotic than I am and your time is more valuable than I am. So go ahead and just find whatever's convenient for you and send it. I'll make it work. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody. We'll see you on Thursday.